This is the meeting of the Burlington Police Commission, January 31st, 2023. Agenda item one, call to order. The time is 6.02 on January 31st, 2023. I'm calling the Burlington Police Commission special meeting to order. We have a roll call and we have a quorum. Uh, is there any motion to ad adopt or amend the agenda? Do you want to call on me, Susie? Uh, Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, so I have a motion to amend the agenda to include two items for public session. Item one, number one is a discussion of the Riverwatch condo contract as well, well as other off-duty contracts. Hold on a minute. Okay. And number two, uh, the item would be the, a, a discussion of the commission's access to unredacted investigative reports. So that's in the form of a motion. I second. Okay. So now we have discussion. Yes. So somebody needs to lean in and help me here. We ha you have a motion, yes? That's great. If there's no, you could ask if there's discussion. If there's no discussion, you can move to a vote. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Tell me what we're voting on exactly, please. We're voting on amending the agenda to add okay. these two items. So we're, I'm calling for a vote on two items. Discussion of the River Watch contract and any additional contracts. And the second one is um, commission access to redacted materials. Unredacted. Unredacted. Unredacted materials. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Aye. Anyone abstaining? Okay, the motion passes. Okay. Agenda item 2.0, public forum. At this time, the public is invited to address the commission. Please identify yourself before you speak to the commission. I do not see anyone online. Is there anyone in the room? No. Okay. So what do we do now? Um, Sorry, we... Commissioner Comerford, you've got a couple folks in the attendees list. I don't know if if they're able to, just due to their positioning on Zoom, if they have anything to share, if they're able to do it. I actually can't see you. raise their hands. Uh, so Mohammed will take care of that. He's going to check. Yeah, they, we have two uh, in Zoom, but no one raised their hand to, did to you, ask to speak. Did you hear that? No one's raised their hand to ask to speak. Okay. Seeing no one, we will close public forum at 6.06. At this time, um, can I have a motion for executive session? Uh, Sorry, we need to take up the two items that were added to the agenda first. Okay. Item number one, discussion on Riverwatch contracts and additional contracts. So, um, Commissioner Comfort, may I? I'd like to provide some information. Uh, I had a conversation with the mayor this afternoon that was very helpful, and I'd simply like to share some information with you all. Uh, the mayor noted that uh, when the BPOA contract was negotiated in 2018 uh, and former uh, police chief Brandon Del Pozo was in office, that there was some concern about off-duty contracts. Uh, the relevant section of the BPOA contract is section G, and it is on page 17 of the 2022-25 contract. The language has essentially not changed. There have been some minor changes to it, but uh, basically the point of that is it gives priority, the city priority 
uh, over off-duty contracts. Um, <clears throat> the, for, the chief needs to sign off on these or his designee, designee, and the BPOA administers these contracts. Uh, the city has conducted a review of contracts to understand whether the Riverwatch condo contract was an anomaly or if there are, if it was, in fact, there's a numerous contracts such as these. And what the mayor said to me is going back to 2015, uh, that the Riverwatch condo contract is an isolated case. None of the other contracts uh, are similar to this. The remainder are uh, for construction uh, sites or for special events such as the marathon, the parade and so forth, where public safety is affected. Uh, the mayor has uh, instructed the chief to not renew those contracts. Uh, and that is the update that I have for all of you with regard to that. And just to note that we spoke this afternoon and he'll be issuing a press release with much of this information. I, I, if any of you have any questions about this, it's a good time to pose them. And if I have the information, I'm happy to share it. I have questions. Uh, Commissioner Rao. Commissioner Rao. Um, which is, I, I just wrote this down very quickly. Um, city has jurisdiction over these contracts or is a, it doesn't, what is the actual wording um, the city has overview over this contract? Um, I'm going to uh, bring up the contract now and read that section if I may. And just one second here. Yeah, I'm only trying to figure out what the, the ch chain of um, command is, or not command is not the right word, but the chain by which these contracts uh, are ratified or agreed upon. Understood. So my understanding of this, and Haley, if I get this wrong, please correct me. My understanding is that the entities uh, make the contract with the BPOA. However, the chief or his or her doesn't need need to sign off on these contracts. So without the permission of the lieutenant, of, of designated lieutenant or the chief, the contracts can't be affected. Haley, can I confirm with you that that's accurate? That's my understanding. However, um, Jared Peller and the other assistant city attorney in our office works more closely with the police department. So um, I, would, I would want the opportunity to, to confirm that that with him, um, but that is my general understanding of the way those contracts work. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Commissioner Comfort? Is it true that the off-duty officers that were doing the River Watch work were using police cars and they had their authorized uniforms and also guns with them? That is my understanding. And uh, again, I'm uh, just, there is a relevant section of the BPOA agreement uh, with regard to that, but yes, that's the case. <clears throat> Thank you. So Any other a, sorry, sorry. Were you, were you gonna say something, Commissioner Comerford? I'm sorry, I interrupted you, I think. No, no, I was just calling for voices and you came. So go ahead. So you're suggest you are saying that there is something in the language that said that allows for that. That's correct. That allows for the use of those city resources. That's correct. Okay. Uh, so um, my understanding is that the officers are prohibited from using any equipment other than department uh, provided equipment. Uh, thank you. Any I will add that. Uh, just for the record that the mayor has asked Chief Acting Chief Murad for an assessment of whether there are sufficient controls in place so that officers aren't working uh, too many hours as a result of their shifts and their overtime. Commissioner Grant. Uh, did we get confirmation as to who approved the contract? 
uh, I, I think at this point I would be um, speculating my understanding as it was a lieutenant who who signed off on the contract. Actually, that I, that 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 I'm certain that a lieutenant signed off on the contract. Any other commissioner like to speak? Okay, Commissioner Seguin. So just to, for clarity, I, uh, I had a misunderstanding before my conversation with the mayor today. I had understood there was going to be uh, sort of an official investigation into this and that was erroneous. Uh, the, as, as you all received, the mayor's office sent us uh, a list of the contracts uh, that have been engaged in with the BPOA and the number of hours worked. And uh, it that seems to me the efforts that the mayor's office uh, engaged in in order to determine whether this contract was an anomaly or whether there was a pattern of contracts such as this. So as I understand it, this is really the effort to uh, investigate this issue. And as I said, the mayor is coming out with a press release shortly. Go ahead. Did someone have their hand up? Okay. Uh, Anthony? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Comerford, Anthony Arpino, um, Prompt to Council for the Commission. I just wanted to point out for those that were curious and looking for it, uh, it is on page um, 17 of the uh, contract under Section G, as uh, Commissioner Seguino previously <clears throat> referenced, uh, with regard to the uniform, um, it, there's a paragraph in the middle of the page that says, officers engaged in special event employment shall wear the full police uniform. Um, there's no reference to police vehicles that I've found in Section G but it is clear that they're actually required to wear the full police uniform unless the chief or his or her designee grants an exception. So um, just to tie up that reference a little bit more, it's on page 17 for those that want to look directly at the contract. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Would any commissioner have another comment on this topic? Okay, Commissioner Sabina, would you move it to the next issue, please? Yes, the next issue regards the Commission's right to access unredacted investigative reports. This um, is in relation to a past investigation in which the Commission received a heavily redacted report. Uh, in, in anticipation of future investigations, we'd like to resolve this issue with the City Attorney's Office. Uh, and uh, I'd like to, um, maybe the best way to proceed is uh, basically I'd like to have this discussion with uh, the Commission's Conflict Council, Anthony Arpino, who is here, and, and Haley McLennan, who is from the City Attorney's Office. I uh, want to, I'm, I, I'm stumbling and asking who to go first. Uh, uh, I'm gonna actually, here's what I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna just summarize what we were informed of uh, by uh, Jared Peller, city attorney, one of the city attorneys, and that is that the public does not have a right to unredacted investigative reports. The question is whether the commission actually is the public or rather is a body appointed by the city council. Uh, with that sort of general statement, let me perhaps turn it over to Anthony. And Haley, uh, I know you'll have some comments. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Seguino. I'm just curious. I, I seem to recall that Jared had that we had the commission had requested a, a written summary of Jared's opinion. Um, has that been received yet, or are we just going off his comments uh, during the um, no, uh, prior it, session? Right. His it has not been received. Uh, this was something that Haley was working on herself that we had asked her about. 
uh, about six weeks or so ago. She was, I think, discussing this with the acting chief. So um, she has knowledge of this, but we don't yet have Jared's written. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So just to put a little more context um, on it, um, the the le there was a complaint that the um, commission was reviewing in great detail um, in involving a use of force incident, and we received the uh, depart the commission received the department's internal investigation report, and there were a number of redactions. Um, including basic information uh, like the identification of the officers involved, um, as well as um, the officers who had sworn out affidavits that were part of the um, report and any reference to the officers' names um, within those reports. And then on top of that, there were some um, additional materials um, in the nature of uh, training materials that um, the department had received in that um, were relevant to the commission's inquiry as to whether the conduct um, under investigation was consistent with the training. Um, and I, I think what the commission had expressed was a, a frustration about um, the extent of those redactions and that there were redactions to begin with. Um, and particularly the suggestion, and again, we haven't seen this confirmed in writing, but it was a suggestion that because those uh, redactions would have to be made in response to a public records request, um, they were made in the case of the commission. And I think the commission's concern really has to do with a sense that the commission um, is not part of an integrated um, police regulatory framework under the charter. That's the suggestion made by the, the redactions, essentially saying that the commission sits out, somehow sits outside the city um, structure for police oversight and regulation. And attention, or, or not attention, but a, a sense that that is um, contradictory to what the commission's role is under the charter section 184 that the commission along with the city council along with the chief along with the mayor um, the commission is an important integrated part of the system of police um, oversight in the city rather than just any member of the public off the street who has rights under the public records act to review certain records but they're they are often subjected to redactions uh, under statutory exceptions. And it's particularly concerning given that um, under the charter, um, the commission enjoys uh, authority and responsibility as dele delegated from time to time by resolution of the city council. And under the city council's um, resolution from um, 2021, November 2021, the commission has been um, delegated the authority to conduct um, audits and reviews and evaluations of policies, directives, or data in regard to discipline, racial disparities, or other commission priorities. So I think the summary concern is, again, um, recognizing that confidentiality is important in the investigation of complaints against the department um, and that there are within our own complaint review procedures a reiteration of the importance of that um, confidentiality as regards persons outside the commission um, and a need to consult with the city attorney's office under our existing policy about disclosure of investigatory um, materials outside the commission to, to persons not appointed by the city council to be part of this integrated system of police oversight. Um, the concern is that the commission shouldn't be treated as an external party, but the commission should be treated as an internal party for the purposes of its own internal reviews. And it um, seems contrary, I think, to the commissioners that basic information and, and even non-basic information would be redacted um, in the documents that they're provided to review 
um, given that they are part of this integrated internal review system. So that was a concern, I think, um, I hope I've summarized it correctly. And I think one that felt um, to the commission like there was some urgency in raising given um, some recent complaints that have been received and we expect will be investigated. So forward looking, wanna get a resolution about the commission's access to unredacted information for the commission's own internal use, not for public disclosure, which is a, a separate issue to, to be taken up at a different time. Does that summarize things uh, appropriately, commissioners? Thanks, Anthony. I think that's very helpful. Uh, if do any commissioners have anything they want to add to that? Uh, let me turn that to Haley. Um, so, I mean, so I guess where I will start is first just a quick sort of overview of, of the city attorney's role in this discussion. Um, and it, it, the city attorney's office's role in this discussion is, is to give guidance to explain what is in place in terms of the commission's power under resolution, under ordinance, under charter, also with um, how that interplays with Vermont law in terms of any confidentiality requirements for the Burlington Police Department, as well as um, under the Public Records Act. So our office's role is um, to give uh, guidance when called upon. We're not um, in the business of compliance, and we also um, don't have any authority or jurisdiction to give directives to um, any boards, commissions, city departments, or um, any other entity of uh, the city to order them into what we feel is compliance. So I just want to make that clear that, that that's not our role. We can give um, guidance. We can absolutely give a legal opinion, but what we can't do is um, we just don't have the the jurisdiction or the authority to to put a mandate towards other departments or towards commissions, any city entities. Um, that being said, you know my background on the issue is that um, Commissioner Seguino came to me with the um, uh, the Burlington investigative. Um, report that was issued that's been um, referenced here this evening. Um, she gave it to me in, in redacted form. I agree there was a lot of information in there um, that was um, redacted. Um, one thing that I want to clarify as far as what I think is, is uh, squarely within the department's duty to redact from this commission in the BIAs, which um, I, I didn't I have I have to confess I haven't reviewed an unredacted copy, but my um, understanding from reviewing the redacted copy is um, under the um, BPOA contract with the city, the collective bargaining agreement between the Burlington Police Officers Association and the city um, in article. Uh, 15 of that contract um, in section G, there's a discussion in there about um, when employees are the subject of uh, an internal investigation that the police department's performing and when those employees are ordered to um, sit and review um, or sit and answer questions and be subject to an interview about about the incident that the department is investigating. Um, those, the answers to those questions and the information that's gathered as a direct result of those em subject employee interviews, um, the release of that information is really, really strict um, under the contract. So um, under the contract, um, that information, um, when it's, gathered and it could lead to disciplinary action is to be considered confidential and it's not to be released to any party outside the chief or the deputy chiefs, the department investigator, the city attorney's office, HR director, um, the mayor's office, 
and then also the police commission, but with this caveat that it's solely for the purposes of fulfilling its appellate review requirements in step two of the grievance process um, in the, um, in the uh, CBA, as well as um, the duty that the commission has to perform that function under the charter. So basically what that means is that when the commission is getting the investigative reports um, as a, in order to more thoroughly vet and review complaints that are coming before it or that are being submitted to the, to the department and the department is briefing the commission on, the department is required under the contract to not release that specific information, meaning information that's gained from employee um, interviews um, in that sort of step one of the process where the complaints are being reviewed. And that information can only be released to the commission um, if we get to step two of the grievance process under the contract, which is when this commission puts on their board of appeals hat and sits in a quasi judicial function to determine um, uh, whether or not discipline imposed upon a particular employee at the department um, is appropriate. So, and the, the rationale for that to my understanding is to sort of preserve this body's ability to act in an independent way to resolve employee grievances should they get to that part in the process. So all that to say is um, that information in the, uh, in the investigative reports, our office has advised that that be redacted from the reports to really preserve that invest or preserve that appellate review function that the police commission serves. So that, that's my best explanation as to those um, those that portion of the redactions. Um, as far as the, you know, it's it's pretty clear that there was um, in this particular instance there was more that was redacted beyond just the employee interview material. Um, and I think, you know, I I I don't want to speak for the chief, and I don't want to speak for the deputy chiefs. Um, so I would appreciate the opportunity to have them come and clarify their position on this to the commission. Um, but I tried to get to gain some clarity myself from the department on some of the redactions and the general um, this general um, sort of response as to all of the redactions was this concern of although the commission as um, Attorney Arapino pointed out is an integral part of the um, you know internal review entity for the police department and to assist the administration with its um, function in overseeing the police department. Um, there's not a whole lot in charter, in statute, um, or in our ordinances that directly governs information sharing between the commission and the department. Um, and there's nothing um, that we have explicitly about what's to be considered um, confidential and what can be discussed in the public sphere. I know at one time there was a suggestion of a confidentiality agreement um, between the possibility of developing a confidentiality agreement between the commission um, and the police department. Um, to perhaps alleviate some of those concerns. That's something that our office, if if called upon, stands ready and willing to assist um, with drafting and pulling together. Um, so that kind of, that is my understanding generally from, from the police department as to some concerns and as to why maybe the extent of the redactions were made there. Um, you know, generally speaking, I think I want to, at least from our office's perspective, um, where this kind of collides with the Public Records Act is not that our office views the commission as just a sort of faithless, anonymous member of the public, um, but rather what, um, what in statute, what in charter, or what um, in ordinance or city council resolution elevates the commission's act, not their not the status as to an integral part of the city's um, oversight um, 
capabilities, but really what elevates the commission's access to information if we're viewing this from a public records um, standpoint. Um, you know, I guess I'll stop there for now and, and I'll see if there are questions from, from the commissioners for me um, as it relates to the contract or information sharing between the commission and the police department. Um, and I would, again, just like to say, I would really appreciate the opportunity for the police department to come and clarify their specific concerns as far as information sharing um, and what they would like to see um, as far as a way to alleviate uh, those concerns. Thank you. Um, Attorney Yarpina, did you, is your hand up? Sorry about that. That was a legacy from my earlier comment. Okay, great. Uh, if I may say, so when this discussion happened with Attorney Pellerin, uh, we were, our understanding was that the decisions around redaction were based on legal advice from Attorney Pellerin. Uh, so Haley, uh, if I may ask your advice then, how we move forward on this. Uh, are you, uh, so feel, feel free to be as detailed as possible. Are you suggesting that in our next meeting that we put this as an agenda item to discuss with the chief? Uh, or is there some other mechanism for resolving this that you would propose? You know, I, I hesitate to be the one to put forth um, a policy solution for um, for sort of uh, carving a path forward for this issue between the department and the commission, simply because I, I don't want to insert my own um, policy judgment for that of the commissioners. Certainly, I think if a confidentiality agreement is something that the commission and the department uh, are considering, um, it would seem to me to be a reasonable next step to um, uh, have the two parties engage with one another to see what kind of terms would be satisfactory to both in order to um, meet the end goal of this commission and um, what I hope would be um, the Burlington Police Department is an, uh, a way to share information um, that uh, makes uh, both parties um, feel as though they're upholding their confidentiality um, agreements and able to perform their uh, duties with the access to information that both sides feels necessary to do so. So from, from my perspective, if the commission wanted to engage the police department for um, a discussion on that issue, I, I view that in my own judgment as a reasonable next step. Um, and sorry, I hope that's that answers what you're asking, Commissioner Seguino. Thank you. My only comment would be that we already have access to many confidential materials. Uh, so, this seems to be uh, an aberration. Uh, I'll just leave it at that, that we already are given access to many confidential materials. So um, I will consult with uh, commissioners on how we proceed and reach out to Acting Chief Murad and consult with uh, Attorney Arpino. At this point, uh, Attorney Arpino, do you have any thoughts to add? Uh, no, I, I, I think the suggestion of some further dialogue with the police to understand, you know, more uh, where the decision to redact is coming from and what the policy concerns are with regard to um, recognizing the commission's role as part of an integrated and internal police oversight and review rather than acting like the commission is um, just any member of the public um, that has certainly a right to know, but uh, statutorily speaking, a lesser right to know. So I, I think um, Attorney McClenahan's suggestion is a 
productive one. And I, I do think it would benefit from some public discussion at a, at a future meeting, because I know it was of great concern to commissioners to see the number of black marks across the reports that were previously shared. And it did, and it did, I, I do concur for, that our, from our discussion, it did seem as though the city attorney's office had given an opinion on that. But um, ultimately what I hear Haley saying is that the city attorney's office can advise, but it's up to the police department ultimately um, how they choose to comply or not um, with information sharing. So a, a direct dialogue with the police department seems like the most efficient and um, constructive way forward. Thank you, um, Attorney McLennan. Do you, could I ask you to uh, convey to Attorney Pellerin that we would really welcome um, a copy of his opinion when I when I uh, communicated with him recently, he talked about how overburdened your office is and asked for our indulgence for a few weeks. I totally appreciate that. If we could get something before our next meeting at the end of February, hopefully by mid February, that would be very helpful, and we will put this on the agenda for our next meeting. Absolutely, I'll I'll bring it to our next um, internal staff meeting, and we'll be sure to get something in writing to the commission and you know it just just to clarify um i think that I, my understanding is that it it was the reductions that were made were were perhaps made as part of a an informal discussion that were ha that was had between him and the police department although i again i that he works much more closely with them so um, I, I'd like him to have the opportunity to clarify, um, but certainly I will. I will make sure the message gets through that that um, an explanation of the of the redactions from our office's perspective um, be submitted to the commission before uh, the next meeting in end of February. Great, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That is, uh, unless there's any more discussion, I think we can close this out. Item out, Commissioner Comfort. Hi, I um is it okay if I said a couple of things? I have my hands up. Go ahead. I I didn't see it, so see it. Again. Uh thank you. Um I just wanted to express the concern. Um I won't say as much as I was going to say because uh Commissioner Seguino already stated that this is definitely an, an aberration. You know, we're looking at a level of redaction that we've never seen before. This is gravely concerning to me. And to suddenly say that we might require some kind of confidentiality agreement when um, we've had numerous, numerous executive sessions where we have been confidential with all kinds of information and, and now suddenly we have this issue. It's just of grave concern. Uh, thank you. So I have an information request, Commissioner Seguino. Do we have to end this meeting to start the other one or can we go straight through? Um, you can ask, uh, I, I believe that uh, I'm gonna ask um, Attorney McLennan for her advice on this, but my under, I'm just gonna ask her for her advice. My understanding is that you state why and there's a motion to go in executive session. Would that be correct, Haley? Um, yes, if there's if that if that's the next agenda item is the executive session, and then correct if wrong, but I don't think there are any other substantive agenda items after the executive session. Correct. Yeah. So you could just make a motion to go into the into the executive session and just let members of the public know who may be watching that there will not be any more action items um, after the executive session concludes. It's it's all one meeting. I understand you might have to switch Zoom links, but for, for purposes of the warning, it's all one meeting. Okay, can I have a motion then to move into executive session? Could you state the reason? To discuss the River Watch um, issue, is that correct? I think Haley gave us language in the email. I didn't see that language. Haley, did you give specific language on this? I have the language to, you know, to she take was, it out. Was, I have that. Yes. It was with reference um, to a complaint. Yes. Yeah, so um, if the chair would entertain a motion 
to move to enter executive session pursuant to 1 VSA 313A4 to discuss a potential disciplinary action against a public officer or employee. I do have that. I was asking a different question, but we just solved it. So thank you. Oh, so I'm sorry then. <laughs> okay, could I have a motion, please? Uh, so moved. Second, please. Second. Okay, we will now move into executive session. Thank you, Haley. For I think we your... have to vote. We have to vote on the motion. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone against? Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I want to say thank you to Haley for participating in the first part of the meeting. And yeah. the rest of us, we will see you shortly. And for the public, we will not have any more public discussion this evening. Thank you very much.